And the Cleveland Cavaliers newest assistant coach Lindsey Gottlieb joins us now on SportsCenter. And coach, thanks so much for taking the time here. You, it's a history making moment leaving the college ranks to come to the NBA. And I just want to start at the beginning of how did this happen? And what, what's the phone call that got the, the, the ball in motion? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a thrill. Pleasure. Um, Thank you. It really started with a mutual friend uh, in the NBA who connected me with Kobe Altman, the GM, and said, hey, you guys would hit it off. He's young and smart, and I think you'd be great friends. Uh, can I give him your number? And I said, sure. And Kobe hit me up and said, hey, we should, we should connect sometime. And that was about it. And then a few, maybe a week or two later, he hires John Beeline. And I texted him, and I said, oh, my goodness, amazing hire. And then he hit me back, and he said, hey, um, can, we, can we talk? And it turned out we were both going to be in Chicago. He was there for the pre-draft workouts, and I was there speaking, uh, doing an engagement. And we sat down uh, for breakfast, and I thought he would talk kind of high-level NBA, you know, where is it going with women. And he looked at me, and he said, we want to do things differently here in Cleveland. Um, we want to build the best staff around Coach Beeline, and uh, we're interested in having you on that staff. And it took me about a minute and a half to put my jaw back up off the ground, right. uh, and the talk started from there. I would ask this question of John Beeline. So this has nothing to do with gender because I believe the NBA to be the most uh, relationship-dependent coaching in, in, in any sport I can think of. And so when you're starting from scratch in terms of building those relationships, what do you feel is going to be most important, not just for you, but for, for Coach Beeline and anybody who's new with these guys to create that, that, that accord? Well, I would argue that you can't coach anywhere well if you can't build relationships. That's true. Uh, Coaching is a people business, and I, I think for me that's come naturally. But I think the number one thing is to be authentic. I think Coach Beeline is a basketball genius, but a really uh, amazing human being, and he should be that, and that's going to resonate. And I hope that what I can bring um, is that if you're natural um, and, and you care about you know people, I think that'll come through. And then I think any basketball players, but especially the ones who are the greatest in the world, want to get better. And if they feel that you can help them, I think they're going to connect. And so I'm really looking forward to it. It's a different challenge obviously not something I've done but um, you know I hope that's one of my strengths that I bring to the staff the ability to you know have a high emotional intelligence and just figure out what these guys need from me what was the process like of figuring out should you do it because you've done very well with Cal but I mean I, I just I'm, I'm trying to take myself through a, a decision I'll never have to make because I'm not going to be confronted with it <laughs> like all right, I'm comfortable I'm good but like wow what's this represent so how, what was the tipping point for you if, if there was any one thing right I mean I had an incredible job. I, I wasn't looking to go anywhere. I wasn't really thinking about this in the media, although the NBA always intrigued me. Um, so the first thing is, uh, it wasn't just enough for me to, you know, to simply be in the NBA. It had to be the right fit. And the mission, vision, values of Coach Beeline, Kobe Altman, you know, then they hired J.B. Bickerstaff. Um, I was so in line with how they wanted to do things. Mm -hmm. um, I was really intrigued by kind of getting in on the ground floor at the beginning of this new era for the Cavs. Um, and, and then when I flew out to Cleveland and met everybody, I mean, I, I called my husband after, you know, eating dinner with those three, Kobe, you know, Coach Beeline and Coach Bickerstaff, and I said, I, I don't know if there are three better people for me to be surrounded by. And everyone in the organization was high level. So all of a sudden, it seemed, you know, pretty hard to pass up. And, you know, we had to reconcile leaving a place that we love here in sure. California and, and the young women that I'm so invested in. But for me, it became a long-term thing of, you know, maybe I, I help those young women on a larger scale um, by doing something like this and, and making a bold move and, and, and also the desire to really be part of this Cavs organization right now um, and, and try to add value. So I struggled with it for a little bit, but ultimately it just um, it seemed like a, the chance of a lifetime and, and, and the right thing to do right now. You know what I'm struck by, Lindsay, is the idea that sometimes if you open a door you can find a room that you never even knew existed. So if this wasn't necessarily your end game or your destination, now this perhaps leads to something beyond. It, is, is there an idea in your head? Maybe, maybe I'm the first to coach in the NBA. And I mean taking the seat 18 inches to your left or right, depending. Scott, I'm trying to do a great job when I get there on Monday. You know, gotcha. help them with the draft prep and all of that. But I do think, you know, you have to, uh, you know, I, I have to think about can this impact you know, on a larger scale, someone somewhere, right? Some sitting college head coach ha had to go be an assistant so that eventually, you know, maybe there's a call to some terrific, you know, women's coach to be a head coach directly one day. Who knows, right? Right. Um, but I, I, I'm so um, in tune with doing a great job so that, you know, I'm, I'm better for the people around me, that I'm, I'm adding value. I'm so excited to learn so much. I mean, how often do you get to 
to have essentially a master class at a certain point in your career where you're learning from the best minds. And I think if I do all of those things well, then sure, it should open doors for people to see women in coaching differently, to see the NBA differently. But that would be a byproduct of you know the day to day, which is is just trying to help this Cavs organization get better. Gotcha. I, I hope that didn't come off as a "Where do you see yourself five years from now?" question, because that's such a terrible, like, bad job <laughs> interview question. I'm just curious if, if if sort of that was in your in your uh, in your mind. Final thing I'm curious is who did you hear from, or what what reaction to the the news that you were going to make this move was sort of most impactful to you? I mean, the outpouring in general was more than I could have ever imagined, um, and it's been overwhelmingly positive. But you know, um, you know, I lost my mom when I was 19 years old, and so she's in my mind a lot. And when Billie Jean King tweeted and knew my name and said how important it was, I, I really thought um, about my mom and, and, and kind of a lot of other you know, women who have gone before um, and, and allowed something like this to even be possible. So I would say Billie Jean King was probably the mic drop one, although there are a lot of really cool ones. I mean, getting a text from Adam Silver was pretty neat, too. <laughs> right on. Well, <laughs> Lindsay Gottlieb, it's now a name that everybody that follows the NBA knows and knows well and is going to get to know better. I wish you all the best, and thanks so much for taking some time. Thank you, Scott.